Our personal reason for making this video is we simply have no idea what we're going to do next year when we when we see quotes from the insurance company because you absolutely need access to healthcare to survive. This is our breakfast because today is another day in hospital. Blani is getting her three weekly infusion, one of her infusions today, um, so she can keep cancer at bay and stay alive. And that inspires us to have a discussion today about the real situation of healthcare in USA. Stay with us, this is gonna be interesting. Does it hurt when they put the thing in? It doesn't because I use that numbing cream. It looks like it would hurt. It, I felt a tiny bit, but it doesn't really hurt at all. Or you're just used to it by now. No. It's like, you know, like you're used to having the pain of uh, your husband being there all the time. It's exactly you kind of like just that. get numb to it and after a while. Eventually you grow to love it. <laughs> This is not an easy subject and it's a complex one, but we're on a mission to talk about this in just a few minutes. And first I want to establish why we feel like we can have an educated opinion here, because one thing about health insurance is you really experience whether it works or not when things go bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think everyone can agree with that, you know, in everyday life when you're healthy and everything is peachy, you're paying some sort of a, uh, uh, you know, monthly payment, installment, whatever, premium for your health insurance or your employer is paying it and you don't even know how much it is. Everything's great. You think everything works and, you know, we have a system, people get better, people get worse. But, but in the end, everybody get, gets the care that they need. Exactly. But when things go bad for you and you're facing real serious health problem that's when you start finding out that the system is far from perfect and that's when you start doing more research to really find out what the system is for the entire country not for just yourself your family and your your you know friends and your close circle of people that you know and then you discover the truth so I feel like and I we... should say that's a problem on our part that's the problem where everybody's passively just okay with everything until they realize it's affected them and that did happen to us yes and uh i feel like we are entitled to talk about it and have an opinion because we've been dealing with it for almost two years now mm -hmm. right um and we 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 know that we know the system from inside out we know the system from a perspective of a patient with a really serious problem life-threatening problem problem that is persistent not just a one-time emergency, because that's also different. Mm -hmm. One-time emergency is when you're, let's say, in a serious car accident or whatever, and you just need to go to emergency room and they basically fix you, put you together. It's a completely different situation than someone who's dealing with a uh, disease that um, is always there every day of your life. You have to think about it. Mm -hmm. So um, let's start from the beginning and on our personal experiences. I'll talk for a little bit and then I'll let Blani take over because she has a lot to say here. Uh, still, we'll try to keep it compact and not take too much time. What if I don't have a lot to say? I think you do. And I want to um, explain something to people who may not understand what Obamacare is, because I know that we have a lot of people from Poland watching, and you may have heard that Obamacare is a health insurance company that was created by Obama, well, not a company, that Obamacare is a health insurance plan that was created by Obama for poor people. It's bigger than a plan even. It's a policy. It's policy. A, it's, it's a law. It's, a, it's yeah. a set but, of rules. But that's what a lot of people think that Obamacare is a plan created for poor people. And that when you buy Obamacare, you're buying insurance for poor people, which is all subsidized and given cheaply to poor people. But that's not Couldn't true. Be more wrong. Obamacare is the Affordable Care Act, which is a whole bunch of stuff, and it's not for poor people. Unless you get to this extreme low poverty level, you do get a, what do they call those things? Subsidy. subsidy. If you're at an extremely low poverty level, you will get a subsidy, but I'm talking like 
it's like eighteen thousand yeah. dollars a year or something and it is for which is really money you can't really survive on in the united I states don't even living know by how. yourself yeah unless you really live I mean, in a so that, low, let's say very, very low end area but i do know of people getting subsidies who have family members so it, it does take into account like your children and and you could get a subsidy if you have like three kids and you make an okay amount of money but it's not something where people are just giving money out and giving free health care to poor people and because of this our health care system broke that's not what it was at all in fact the affordable health care act told insurance companies that you cannot reject someone just because they have a pre-existing condition what kind of a freaking world is it where we had insurance companies who could say, no, you might get sick, so I don't want to cover you? Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, we, we're not even talking about the very basic fact here that in the United States, basically everybody has to pay for their medical insurance. It's not mm -hmm. even a situation like, you know, a lot of other countries, I'm not going to give any particular countries, where you go to the hospital where something's wrong with you and they treat you and you have no idea how much it costs who really paid for mm -hmm. it because the country, the, the state, the government takes care of it. That's how the whole country is set up. Well, when they, just to, I'm just going for the um, alternative people. When you say the country takes care of it, what that means is the citizens are paying taxes and then the country takes care of it. And the problem goes back to David's situation, where you had the $1,200 a month insurance that you were going to have to pay. People who are healthy don't see any reason to pay that $1,200 a month insurance. And why should they? Why would you spend $1,200 a month if you don't have any foreseeable need for that, when you know that unless some catas catastrophe happened, some catastrophic event happened, you're not ever going to see that money again. You're not going to use it. But without the people like David who were healthy and paying that $1,200 a month, then all the people who are sick, their insurance continues to go up. And you know, your $1,200 a month wouldn't have been that much if, if more people like you had bought into the insurance program. Absolutely. And that was the reason for the, what do they call that thing? The mandate. Yes, that was the reason for the mandate because they wanted healthy people to buy in and they didn't buy in So enough. another part, very important and crucial part of Obamacare was the individual mandate, which was the law saying, if you are um, able to get insurance on your own, you have enough money, you're making enough money per year, and you don't decide to buy a plan, you're gonna be penalized every year. When you file your taxes, they're gonna add a fee to your taxes, which is a penalty for not having health insurance because it was already determined that you can afford it. And that penalty was like $300? That penalty was increasing every single year. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't buy insurance on your own. Mm -hmm. Some people still <clears throat> decided, you know, I'm fine with that. I'd rather pay 300 bucks at the end of the year than spend 1200 a month or whatever, 600 a month if you're an okay person or 400 a month uh, for that health plan that I don't feel like I need. Mm -hmm. Which again is stupid thinking if you really look at the big picture but that mandate but it's introducing it yes of course it's gambling it's absolutely gambling. but introducing that mandate was um making the whole system work better it mm -hmm. was trying to introduce some order into this system and really regulate it so that it was trying to make it so that people who didn't need health insurance bought it anyway and then the prices went down for everybody including the people who didn't have health insurance if that mandate worked, if everybody had purchased into insurance whenever they were supposed to, then your $1,200 as a single person without any illnesses would have been more like $300 Absolutely. a month. But a not enough people decided that the mandate was enough of a penalty to make them not buy into insurance. Yes. And so it does make people like me feel guilty thinking that why should some single man who's perfectly healthy have to pay $1,200 a month just so I can afford health insurance? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. And the only way to fix that that I see is to not make you pay $1,200 a month, make you pay some smaller portion that's in your taxes. Because then you don't even see it. It's just something that's in your taxes. It's a part of something that the government provides for you. And it's not $1,200 a month then, because if every single citizen was spending some percentage in relation to their taxes, the cost would be so much lower. Absolutely. 
um, continuing with uh, why Obamacare introduced some order and was definitely, definitely, definitely the step towards the right direction. A lot of people will argue Republicans will be always against it, no matter what happens, no matter how many more people got insurance thanks to Obamacare. They will always argue against it, whatever. But it's they not argue about that. against it with a misnomer, saying that poor people are getting health care and we shouldn't have to pay for poor people. But that's not what's happening. Right. It's sort of it's sort of difficult to talk about uh, health care and health insurance without making the video political, but we'll try very hard to not politicize it in any way because all those things are overlapping and they interrelated. Uh, the problem is that so many people don't understand health care and they don't take the time to learn about it because they're healthy and they don't need to. And then <laughs> when they aren't healthy, all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, this system is so effed up. Yeah. I do believe the healthcare system needed reform. That's indisputable. I'm not disputing that yeah. Obamacare was perfect. But it, you, it, it definitely needed improvement, sure. But they had, if they thought it was so terrible, they knew eventually they would have a president in the White House they had six years, eight years, however long, to come up with a plan that was better at, and at made more sense. At least come up with a plan. At yeah. least come up with a plan that would make sense. Uh, what did we hear from Mr. Orange when he finally took office? Uh, nobody realized uh, healthcare was so difficult. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Everybody realized, except you. You're see, the only one see, who didn't we, realize. We did just say that unless you're, that's the problem This with this president. Unless you're engulfed in the healthcare situation yourself. We just said that you often don't pay attention to that. We literally just said that. But the problem is, when you're a president, when you're running for president, you freaking have to pay attention to it! You're not Jane Doe down on the street who's 28 years old and does a yoga and has no problems. Your problem is Jane Doe and Johnny in the ghetto and John Smith in Hemphill, Texas. Your and problem is and also John, the CEO of a huge bank who can yeah. basically afford his own hospital if he wants to. So, yes, you should have known this was a big... I'm going off track, but he should have known this is a big problem. But he's so. not the person who knows anything, so let's uh, drop that. The situation right now is the individual mandate has been taken back. It doesn't... Yes. It's not going to affect people in this year when, it, when we're filing taxes for 2018. The individual mandate is not going to be there, which means, which means in simple terms, you're not going to pay that penalty at the end of the year anymore for not getting health insurance. Not only is the mandate removed to discourage people, not encourage them, I guess is the word, to buy health insurance, but also the costs, they're just rising. Every single year they rise. And that's exactly <laughs> what we arrive to. This is the actual situation with health insurance in America right now. Everybody pays for it out of their own pocket. I have some friends who um, the wife actually makes less money than her husband does. So they actually, the company will match your insurance based on what portion you're making, what per what your income level is. So the woman makes and end, ends up making less in this particular relationship. Therefore, their, her company cost for insurance is less than what her husband who makes more makes so basically the insurance company will pay a small portion of the insurance but they are still paying and it, like you said it just comes right out of their check so now the where, where, where we currently are with the with the situation in USA is uh, the personal mandate was removed um, a lot of other things were taken out of Obamacare um, the current administration's efforts to dismantle it are nowhere near completion. It is still there, it is still working, but uh, with what, what's happening right now is insurance companies have more freedom to jack up the costs for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, our premium has already gone up dramatically from last year. It's likely to go up dramatically again next year. Well, they've said even with that mandate, it's gone up every year. Right. Because less insurance companies are participating in the marketplace. But by small percentage. Yes. Now it's going up yes. like this. Well, this time it went up like that, and next year it's going to go up like double that. Yeah. Because there is no mandate. Last year there was, and it still went up, and next year... Our personal reason for making this video is we simply have no idea what we're going to do next year when we, when we see quotes from the insurance company, because... 
you absolutely need access to healthcare to survive. So what we ended up doing this year was cutting my part of the yeah. insurance down <laughs> because I still, you know, I'm I'm not in a desperate need mm -hmm. like Blonnie is at the moment. So which, what we ended up doing was giving me the same insurance that I had before because that's another problem that you don't even have to go into, but changing insurance would cause a lot more problems for me. I would also have to go to different doctors. And when you're in this situation, you don't want to go suddenly to different doctors. Yes, because your current doctors are already tied to you. They understand your situation. They understand your history. They're emotionally, you know, connected. So in order, and you need that, you need that a doctor who cares about you personally to want to fight for you because we saw what happened when I didn't have that at yeah. Johns Hopkins. Yeah, we can link the episode. You guys can watch it. Go ahead. But what was the um, thing right before that? <laughs> that it's more getting more difficult for people to pay for insurance. Oh, what we ended up doing. What we ended up doing was I stayed with my insurance and you got the lowest plan that possibly you could possibly get. So next year, who knows what that lowest plan will be. <laughs> no idea. We have to find a way to make a lot more money, a lot more money, uh, um, or possibly, uh, you know, cut me out completely. I have no idea. No, no idea where it's going to go, what it's going to be. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good with the projections that we're observing right now. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, this year just started. So we have 10 months to figure it out. I guess our closing thought is we don't know what we're going to do next year. So <laughs> we're hoping that every single thing we do can make a little bit more money. Our closing thought is uh, we hope this gives you a little bit more of an insight of uh, the real situation in the U.S. with health insurance. If you have questions for us, go ahead and fire away. Uh, we'll try to answer them. Again, we're dealing with this on a daily basis. So. We're not only doing a lot of research, but we have all this personal experience. That's why we feel like we are entitled to talk about this. And ask questions, and we will answer based on fact, not based on emotional exactly. feelings. So if you have questions, ask them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you didn't already. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Um, okay. maybe, Hold on. I know, don't, don't worry about it, it won't move anymore. Okay. <laughs>